Welcome to another Wednesday's Word. As you can tell, it's Christmas, but not everything we're reading in the Bible leads right to Christmas, even though it leads to Christ. One of the passages I'm reading right now is the book of Hosea, and it's a tough one because it's a story about a prophet, Hosea, who's told to marry a woman of immorality, a prostitute named Gomer. And it's tough because I know it's easy to make it academic. He marries this woman, she cheats on him, they have kids together. He names his kids things like, not my child, I don't know you. And then they go home to my wife and baby and think how hard that would actually be to look across the table at somebody who you love dearly and probably who loves you but is so broken that she just keeps running away. To look at children and say that this child who I love, who I'm teaching to talk and walk, is a representation of how Israel's turning away. And God is a heartbroken father and husband looking at his children, looking at the church, Israel. Um, both of those are used as metaphors for his bride. And the heartbreak and the reason he did send Jesus to the cross. And so as we read the Bible, sometimes we have to slow down because I've heard the story of Hosea for years and years. It's really easy just to like, oh yeah, yeah, I get it. But slow down sometimes and get into the emotion behind it. What would it be like to be Isaiah and see God in the temple? And then even after he sees that, to see Israel still keep running away and refuse to understand God's holiness. What would it be like to be Ezekiel, who's called to lay naked on one side and build a fort and pretend to lay siege to Jerusalem and then eat bread that's cooked over cow manure as a symbol of judgment? What would it be like to be Daniel, to be exiled away from everything he knows, to be successful but heartbroken and homesick? What would it be like to be Hosea? And then once you get underneath that surface, you begin to understand a little bit more about God. In Hebrews, it says that we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with us, but we have a Jesus who was tempted in every way that we are. So Jesus deals with the same heartbreak, the same sense of abandonment, all the things that we struggle with, but in all those, he never sinned. He never let those get the better of him. And those emotions, that sadness, that longing, the, the way you look at a kid who doesn't go to church, who doesn't talk to you and you just want to fix that relationship because the relationship is a symptom of something that's even deeper, of a brokenness where they're not just turning away from you, they're turning away from the things that are best of life. If we as humans can feel that, how much more must God? So as we go into the Advent season, remember that we have a God who looks at us the way a husband looks at a wife or a father looks at a child with that much love and brokenness. And he says, I'll do whatever it takes to make this better. And this is how God showed his love among us. They sent his one and only son, Jesus, that he could die for us, that we might have life eternal with him. All right, that's all we got for this week. And I hope you're preparing to have a wonderful Christmas.